Uh, and then I would like to uh, briefly touch upon uh, the so-called uh, longevity hype in Silicon Valley. As we all know, and uh, I'm anxiously awaiting, Google promised us to solve the problem of death in 2013. And uh, unfortunately, this has not yet been the case. However, we definitely observed uh, great successes in significant uh, life, lifespan expansions of model organisms, such as uh, the worms elegance lifespan was extended by 500%. Uh, mice lifespans were expanded by, you know, 24%. So there's definitely advances there. But here's the problem. So while, of course, it's important to do scientific research, we cannot ignore the fact that uh, men are not mice, okay? There's a huge issue of transferability of uh, even successful clinical results uh, into human clinical trials. If anything, the, there's a staggering failure rate of uh, over 90%. So obviously it's not working perfectly. Uh, there is also the so-called replication crisis when even successful experiments cannot always be uh, replicated. And our position is that uh, to remedy that, uh, the, the article that you see here, I highly recommend to read it in science in February of this year. So the uh, points I'm making are derived from there. Uh, basically there is a you know huge discrepancy in complexity and regulation between model organisms and humans and system biology and machine learning uh, need to be used to translate to, to translate relationship across species and the conclusion is that instead of humanizing animal models a greater success will come from humanizing computational models derived from animal experiments so Key conclusions on California is such that, yes, obviously it is a very important region uh, in science, including longevity. However, there are many, many other regions uh, globally that focus on longevity as well. And their focus is not just uh, biomedicine and model organism or so-called R&D moonshots. So I've mentioned the importance of HTAC, the P4 medicine. So it's a very important factor to uh, consider. Also, uh, our position is that I uh, would say such overexcitement about successes in uh, extension of lifespans of model organism, organisms, if anything, creates this hype because you can be very excited that the worm will live 500% longer, but then what does it mean to us? And uh, so basically what, what, uh, this in turn can lead to you know, investments in companies uh, that follow that model and then disappoint, huge disappointments uh, when the res corresponding results do not translate into humans. And that in turn can essentially, you know, create the nuclear winter in the longevity industry as a whole, because you would say, hey, like these guys did not really achieve anything in as it applies to humans. So um, there are a few um, aspects I would also like to mention uh, in terms of what can we actually do in terms of human life extension, right? Because that's very important and we don't see much progress yet uh, unfortunately. So here our view is that there are uh, four pillars of life extension research. One, pillar one is classic. It's, uh, you know, it's the so-called exper experiments with model organisms. There is great success there, as we see. But again, there is an issue of transferability. Then there's pillar two, which is uh, so-called biohacking and quantify itself. And this is the opposite, because these are people who are applying cutting-edge, uh, you know, therapies. Uh, to uh, not all of them being FDA approved, to actually experiment with themselves at their own risk and try to extend their lifespan. Then there's pillar three, uh, which is age-related diseases, and is doing very well because we see advancements here in terms of including uh, treatment of cancer. There is uh, uh, age-related diseases are a huge factor for economy and they warrant large government funding which they receive. And uh, so we, and we've seen several uh, successes over the past few years. And thankfully, we also see a tendency when uh, the focus is being shifted from treated, treating the age-related disease as an end result, but actually also focusing on preventive measures, which is very important. And then finally, pillar four is AA data science and mathematical technologies for longevity. Personally, we think this, this pillar holds the greatest promise. And also simultaneously, it is uh, probably uh, one of the pillars that is uh, very much under the radar and this needs to be changed because we cannot ignore the fact that uh, biology of aging is extremely complex process, right? So there's a huge amount of data. 
uh, and therefore it's extremely important, number one, to generate and analyze this data uh, to get, to, let's say, to get started, but also it can produce new net positive results. So our position is that uh, that pillar, I mean, that, that the longevity research with respect to pillar four uh, will be more of a data generation problem uh, and it's aggregation generation and analysis uh, versus anything else. So in terms of uh, prognosis with respect to each pillar, we expect that, you know, experiments with model organisms will continue to succeed and we sincerely hope that they will uh, successfully translate that into human trials as well. Biocarcus will continue doing their thing, and uh, of course there will be more advanced uh, technologies coming up. Uh, Age-related diseases uh, obviously are doing very well uh, right now, and, and we see no reason why advancements will not continue. And again, I said the greatest promise we believe uh, uh, lays in AI, and we are hoping to contribute to that pillar and encourage others, because this is where we see the greatest promise is.